G'day, this is Jamo, um, number 8 TV. We've, uh, we're down in Hamilton now and it's the Harlequin's, uh, Harlequin's Luncheon. We've managed to uh, weasel our way in here. We've caught up with perhaps the most iconic New Zealand rugby player of all time, and Sir Colin Meads. And uh, being a decent bloke, he's agreed to have a quick chat to number 8 TV. Colin, um, all black spring box tonight, mate. How do you reckon it's going to go? Oh, well, I, I think the weather's a bit dicey. You know, we've had a few showers this afternoon, but uh, I think tonight the forecast's going to be clear and that'll help New Zealand. But uh, after last week with Australia, the spring box was smarting. Uh, but I think it'll give the All Blacks confidence and I'm looking for a good win. Yeah. You, you, you of course, played the box a few times yourself, mate. Um, probably probably one of the most notorious or most well-remembered incidents in New Zealand rugby is old uh, Skinner's antics against the box. Do you uh, manage to get your hands on one of them yourself, mate? Oh, oh no, no, no. I didn't play in 56, but, uh, no, they, they were, you know, he was a great man, Kevin Skinner, and he... You know, he gets blamed for a lot of things, but like he was a terribly powerful scrummer and uh, he he uh, sorted one or two out, put it that way, but not not as physical as what some people think. Yeah, good stuff. You, you, you would have played with a few legends in your time, mate. Who do you personally rate as one of the one of the better players of New Zealand rugby that uh, you played with that perhaps didn't get the, the, the profile or exposure that they uh, may have deserved? Oh, from a New Zealand point of view? Yeah. Uh, some of the New Zealand ones, uh, you know, me, me brother Stan, he probably played 15 tests, I think we found out last night. And so, But he, you know, he retired early and gave the game away. But, uh, you know, some of the great Springbok legends, and I always think of Frick Dupree, a great mate of mine, I have a bit yeah. to do with him. And he's got a mate over here who knows him terribly well. I've got to have photos taken with later on. So. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, but like, no, it's good. To, Springboks are always strong opposition. They were fiercely competitive, and uh, they didn't mind mixing it a bit. Good so, uh, getting back to New Zealand for the, uh, the the New Zealand Cup this year, you've always seen a big uptake in the number of people attending the games, and that. Uh, how, how do you think the state of the game is in New Zealand at the moment? Well, in the country, like the smaller provinces, so they're doing terribly well. But uh, you know, we. We in the King Country and some of the smaller provinces, we are getting, we don't get much exposure, you know, like, like with Nelson Bays and uh, Hawke's Bay and, uh, you know, even counties had a win the other night. So, you know, it's tremendous. And uh, But, you know, still the worry is with the smaller unions like the King Countries and the Wire Wrappers and the Poverty Bays, we're, we're still struggling, but it's a good competition and we're, we're getting reasonable crowds. To, in comparison to what we've had in the last few years. And uh, King Country's looking to come up to that second division uh, or second status competition next year. <coughs> that, that should bode well for them? Oh, well, they've got to keep winning because they lost their first game against Poverty Bay, which they shouldn't have lost. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's a, the two top teams will be the ones that will go up. But that's if the competition ever changes. I. I have some grave doubts that it might not, might not change from some of the vibes I hear from some of those lesser unions that are doing terribly well and uh, you get a team like Nelson Bays that's now top of the ladder and uh, can't see them go wanting to go down if they win the competition, would you? You bang on it. Anything else you want to grab? So we've got a favourite memory from uh, playing South Africa. Alright. Um, what, what used to play Africa? I was there in 60, and you know, some of my favourite memories in Africa is... Just getting to start again, just yeah. make sure that when you're holding that, try and point it, whether it's a yourself or a Okay. Um, so, so, of course, you played Africa in the 1960s. Um, you, you got a little quirky memory of, uh, of, of the tour over there that you can share with Number 8 TV, mate? I always remember second test in 1960. Uh, well, I always thought it was one of my greatest tests and I actually played number eight that day and I was lucky enough to score a try and uh, I got the ball from a chap called Kevin Laidler who was running at centre. He had a dab and passed it inside to me and I scored, you know, I'll say 40 yards away, but it was only, <laughs> only about 20. But, uh, and uh, so, you know, they were good memories, but they were all fiercely competitive test matches and they always... The great Danny Craven used to talk to the team beforehand and all about how you had to beat these All Blacks and all that sort of thing. But no, they were good guys. Very good. Well, thanks for your time, Colin, and uh, we'll see some more of you on Number 8 TV.
Yeah, all the best to number eight because I hope it's going well and uh, those uh, few ads we did with Buck, I, you know, I hope they're working well and everyone's joining up. Good on you, mate. Go to number8.co.nz.